Hello, I am Jimmy Elizondo from Real World Ranching. Today I would like to welcome you to my third blog of this series studying what total grazing does and what it means to your profits and to your land improving every year. Now we're going to talk about the differences between theories or the difference between a theory and reality or how nature functions. The regrowth after grazing relies on root and crown energy reserves. It, this is as nature functions and is what, why I want fat roots in my forages. The theory that says that regrowth depends on leaving enough photosynthetic, photosynthetic material or leaves ungrazed is not correct. That theory came from a study done by Ryder in 1955 in Missouri by clipping at short intervals of less than 30 days between clippings on young annual grass as a monoculture that hadn't had the opportunity to grow a full root system before the experiment started. No cattle, cattle were used, only scissors. Now, what could be wrong with that? Well, there was no regrowth enhancing saliva, no tugging of plants by cattle, no manure or urine deposited, no hoof effect of high stock densities. In short, a very incorrect experiment, which is the basis of the take half, leave half actual recommendations by most grazing teachers and advisors. In real life, it doesn't happen that way especially under total grazing, where the saliva is close to the ground and as we know, the closer the saliva is to the ground, the better its effect. We also know that the hoof effect at high stock densities enhances the gas interchange in our soils, which is necessary for even higher forage production, as air that we breathe is almost 80% nitrogen. We also know that having fat roots and crown energy reserves is essential for fast regrowth after the total grazing. And in, and in that experiment, the monoculture of annual grasses was young and not allowed to express itself. Initially, the take half and leave half look better as there is some green leaf left while the total graze plants are initiating regrowth, thanks to roots, crown reserves, and have a flush of microorganism activity, and thanks to the longer rest, rest period, will achieve much higher productivity and much better biodiversity. Long rest period. No wonder their conclusion was totally different than what is possible with total grazing management, which emulates what the large herds of migratory herbivores did under the predator effect. The better the leaf to stem ratio and the longer the rest period allowed by total grazing also creates plants that are not stressed and are not compelled to go to seed. This allows for photosynthesis efficiency much longer into the year than with selective grazing. I call them happy plants and we'll talk about that in the next blog. See you there and thank you for listening.